Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those who do not know, my name is Ali, I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. Through this channel I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar channel. So if anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategic or compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than that, less than nine dollars a month information is available in the description below in today's video we're going to be looking at mmat meta materials there is a corporate update today expected and i'm going to share with you some questions that which i believe the short board should address including questions regarding mmtlp and we're also going to be looking at re-examining the letter that was sent by greg mccabe to finra and uh, looking at potential uh, implications of that and why finra may or may not have replied so far and then finally we're going to finish off by having a look at Tixamal vnd which has had some uh, significant FDA news so stay tuned for that so before we get started let's have a look at what's happening in the markets and we can see here first of all there is news with regard to non-farm employment change so this is good news for the US economy and we can see that non-farm payrolls have gone up 184,000 compared to the estimated 148,000 and that is the most since July 2023 so great news there and uh, what we can also see here uh, in terms of the uh, overall market the s p 500 is bouncing as it tries to shake off the early second quarter struggle and uh, finally uh, shout out here to elon musk who's just tweeted here with regard to the ev market and we can see here what holmar's catalog has stated is that in the future every car will be self-driving and electric every car Tesla makes will be self-driving electric and robot car cars will eat the old auto market and te Tesla will be the benefactor. And what uh, Elon Musk has stated, he stated, we will license the tech to the other car companies as well. Let's start by having a look at the expected corporate update from Meta Materials later on today. So go ahead and uh, join through the link and hopefully we'll uh, learn in terms of what they are updating us about. So as far as I'm concerned, I have uh, shared some questions that I believe that the board should address, whether or not they do or they do not. That's a different matter. But first of all, with regard to the recent earnings, I think they were showing a significant decline in expected revenue and actual revenue. So we can see here that what I would like them to do is uh, give us an update on expected future contracts. What is their long-term vision for revenue costs and expansion? Uh, what, and also what is the justification for the offering, the share splits and why alternatives for funding were not considered. Uh, and many of these were shared, I think by George Palikaros and also by John Berder. Uh, the West Christian report that we featured in the previous video. So let's have an update on that. And also I believe they have significant amount of information in terms of the MMTLP fiasco and what are they doing or what have they done to fix this because obviously shareholders are extremely concerned and number six obviously looking at additional correspondence they may be able to share with FINRA I believe Metamaterials will have uh, some of this correspondence and I believe so not all of it has been shared uh, and further clarification in terms of why George Palakaras could not have been kept on I know George did resign uh, but I think the company could could have uh, certainly put out a stronger uh, force in terms of trying to keep in and then number eight another concerning thing in the earnings was why was the value of the fixed and the current assets including intangibles such as patents why was that significantly declining uh, especially obviously the intangible assets were going down which we're talking about patents and final question number nine is the company subject to a takeover a merger a buyout uh, and uh, what is basically going on Let's now have a look at the letter that was sent by Greg McCabe to FINRA. So uh, the person that this was sent to was Robert L.D. Colby and he is the Chief Le Legal Officer of FINRA and in the legal department. Obviously he works very, very closely with Robert Cook as well. Uh, and uh, let's now proceed to have a look at the letter. So this letter from uh, Greg McCabe addressed to Robert Colby is basically stating there has been a significant amount of data uh, regarding the imbalance in our shareholder ledger. 
and very early results show that we obviously we were considerably higher than the 2.65 million aggregate short interest stated in the FINRA FAQ. So uh, the reason why we're looking at this is we are expecting a response from FINRA and that has not happened. So it's, this is a reminder. And obviously in terms of what FINRA said, uh, their request, the investment banking firm representing Nextbridge on the proposed S1 has received several inbound calls from financial institutions to buy the shares. One of the inquiries was of a large size, so um, obviously he, uh, Greg McCabe has stated he spoke to them personally and uh, he now has knowledge of a sh admitted shareholder imbalance from one single financial institution. So uh, again, important reminder there. He's also stated there was a significant disconnect between the growing data and FINRA's stated number of 2.65 million shares. So I think this could be one key reason why FINRA are going to be hesitant to reply to this letter. Uh, and he also states this highlights the need for a more exhaustive review of the total shares. So why are FINRA preventing um, an audit of the shares, a, a, a release of the share count? And I think this could be one of the things that they are worried about because obviously it contradicts directly the FINRA FAQs. He's gone on to say the goal of the investigation is to make sure every shareholder like myself and, and most of you out there who purchased MMTLP have the corresponding one-for-one -one next bridge hydrocarbons at the moment we don't have that many are held in street name and many people have not moved to AST and he also goes on to say that the party that sold the shares short of MMTLP uh, carried the short position through to the private company through to next bridge hydrocarbons and obviously the shares have not been uh, sold to the rightful owner and needs to be consummate and uh, they need to consummate the final step to, uh, of the short transaction and purchase those shares which hasn't, hasn't happened i believe that is a legal contractual obligation which they are in breach of uh, without a borrow and deliver them to the rightful owner so um so far unfortunately no response from finra to these questions and finally let's have a look at tixamo vnda also known as van der pharmaceuticals so there was news that was shared exclusively in the discord and this was with regard to the company receiving regulatory approval for FANPA and this is to treat manic or mixed episodes linked to bipolar disorder in adults. The treatment has been used in adults with schizophrenia for years but the company has now stated that they have, there is a new indication that would increase their commercial opportunity. So the shares were up significantly. So let's have a look at time of editing, just in excess of 47% at $5.82. Uh, uh, and this is a stock that has been uh, carefully covered in the Discord. So we shared this in our stock alerts and also uh, earlier in our weekly watch list where I stated that there is a PDUFA expected around April 2024, uh, plus hearing news expected uh, in March 2024. And then we also covered the breaking news in, in the Discord. Uh, and in terms of uh, the actual news, let's have, proceed to have a look at that. So April the 2nd, 2024, just released uh, on the company website, we can see they've received US FDA approval for acute treatment of bipolar disorder. So this uh, approval uh, represents a significant, significant novel indication for Van der Van Pat franchise. So the commercial opportunity is potentially huge. So in terms of the actual trial, the treated, pa the treated patients showed larger improvements than the placebo. Uh, treated patients and the difference was highly statistically significant so this is great news this is what the FDA normally look for and obviously in terms of the side effects these were also within the tolerance from what we can see so uh, finally if you would like to get more breaking news as well as stock alerts and um, join get a copy of our weekly watch list details are in the description below thank you very much for watching please stay tuned